Hello everyone and welcome to the electrical nature of matter. So today we're going to get into our topic. To begin, all matter contains electrical charges. Which are evenly or unevenly distributed or spread out. If we were to take a balloon, or if a balloon is rubbed against something like hair, which you've probably hopefully done a thousand times before, the electric charges are no longer evenly distributed. Let's see if I can adjust that so it looks nice. So, if I were to try to explain that a little bit better, let's go look at a balloon. With a balloon, I'm going to start with the neutral balloon. On your note that you have in front of you, this is the middle box. Please make sure that you're labeling the balloon that says neutral balloon. When we're talking about our neutral balloon, all objects have positive and negative charges. We have our positive charges, which I'll use a plus sign to symbolize, and we've got negative charges, which I'll use a negative sign to symbolize. I've included labels over here. If an object is neutral, what we're going to have is we're going to have an even distribution. So evenly distributed means evenly spread out. And an even amount of our charges. So I'm going to start our object out with an even distribution. So All right, so now I have one, two, three, four, five, six positive charges. So I'm going to label that right here. I've got six positive charges. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six negative charges. And because we have an even distribution of our positive charges, so if I take my six positive charges and I'm going to take my six negative charges, they would cancel out and will be equal amounts. So because of the equal amount of both, we know that this is overall neutral. So therefore, this balloon is neutral. Make sure to label that on your diagram. And there's your neutral balloon. So to make things a little bit simpler, or more simple for myself, I'm going to copy all my charges. Give me a second to select all those. Now, if we go to a positive balloon example, what will end up happening to have an object which is positively charged is it means that we will have less negatives than positives. Take a second and notice that I have not lost or moved any of my positive charges. They remain in the same spot, and I have my two negative charges. So if I look at my totals, I've got um, six positive charges still. And if I add that to um, two negative charges, six positive plus two negative is going to be overall four positive. So this balloon is going to be overall positive balloon. So in our neutral balloon, we had an equal number of positive and negative charges. In our positive balloon, we have more positive charges than negative charges. And if we were to have a, oops, I made a mistake with my label there. I just changed that to a negative. There we go, much better. And if I were to look at our balloon over here, um, to get a negative balloon, what I'm going to end up doing, is I'm going to have much more. Let's get those around. They're evenly distributed. I was kind of counting under my breath, you may have even heard me counting, but I should have 11 negative charges. Eleven negative charges. So in this situation, I still have my original six positive charges. 
and I have 11 negative charges. Therefore, all right, one second, just change the text, positive. And I'll have negative charges. Because I have more negative charges, therefore, bloom is negative. In reality, you have way more than just uh, one or two positive or negative charges. So in reality, the number of charges that would exist in an object would be way more than just um, six positive and 11 negative. You'd have um, a humongously larger number of charges, but for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna keep it simple and um, kinda, um, simplify our diagram by having less. I also noticed a mistake that I should label this negative charge, so sorry about that. This should be negative charge here. Sorry about that. And over here, <laughs> this should be a negative charge. Sorry about that. Good. So, good, good, good. So next, what we'll end up talking about is we're going to talk about rule number one. Rule number one is the simplest and most important uh, rule when we're talking about our static electricity unit. And rule number one is that positive, please notice I'm using all caps, charges do not move. This happens between objects or within an object. You do not have positive charges moving. And I'll even take a second, and I'll be ultra obvious with this one. I'll draw some stars just to make it really obvious that this is super duper obvious, uh, super duper important. Do not forget that this is important. So these are the best stars I can draw really quickly. Positive charges do not move, folks. So do not forget this. That is super duper important. So. The oh, just to a little bit more. The uneven distribution of charges often remains that way for a for longer or shorter periods of time. You see this with your hair and with your toque in the winter when you take your toque off. Um, generally, you will have a static charge in your hair. Depending on how humid the air is or isn't will affect um, how quickly or how much um, or how long the charge differential remains in your hair. Because the charge remains, where the object was rubbed the charge is called static which is fancy talk for uh, in moving or not moving please notice this is a bold term and I'll take one second just to make sure to be very obvious on that okay, but this is definitely a term that I would make sure I remembered or had in my notes for something that I will see on a film of blank. That is definitely an important term, so make sure you know that. The study of electric of the study of electric charges is called the electrostatics. And again, this is something that is bold, and I would definitely make sure that I highlight in my notes and know that this is an important term. There is a law of electric charges, and the law of electric charges states that two objects with the same charge will repel. Um, the law of electric charges states that two objects with opposite will attract. You see this with magnets. Uh, if in the magnet with a positive uh, pole is brought to another magnet with a positive pole, they repel. And if a magnet with a negative pole is brought toward the uh, magnet with a positive pole, they attract. 
When it comes to uncharged objects or neutral objects, they have an equal number of positive and negative charges, as I showed you above with the balloons. If we rub two objects together, one object becomes MSD's. <coughs> Sorry about that. Becomes negatively charged. The other object becomes positively charged. And both objects can now attract the neutral objects. More on this to come. I believe that's the end of your note. So please make sure that you have that complete. And at the bottom of your sheet, you'll notice that there are three homework questions for you to complete. Make sure that those are done. And if you feel like you need to rewatch this amazing video, uh, you may do so at your own leisure. Take care. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.